Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. Today, we're going to be talking about a topic that people have been asking for, which is the hypershade. So the hypershade inside of Maya, it's a really powerful thing that we have, which allows us to create materials and generate either traditionally texture materials or procedurally generated materials. It's something that every Maya user like gets to use very, very frequently. Here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to assign the basic like Lambert one material to my character. I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to delete unused nodes. This is a very handy thing to eliminate anything that we're not using. And we're going to clean this little thing with this guy right here. So if I go to Arnold and I hit render right now, what's going to happen here, as you can see, is we got this little guy just like hanging out right here. So maybe illithid from uh, Icewind Dale Adventure from D&D. And when we want to shade our character, when we want to apply different materials to it, we use the hypershade. The hypershade is the place that we're going to uh, be or that's going to allow us to generate interesting things. Now, more often than not, or I would say in my personal or particular case, I use the hypershade with textures that I get from Substance or other places, and I just plug in the textures where I need them. However, you can actually use the hypershade to generate very interesting materials. I'm going to show you here right now. So I'm going to select the skin here. I'm going to sign a new material. It's going to be an Arnold AI standard surface. And if we jump into the hypershade, you're going to see that we have our AI standard surface here and a little display over here. Now, this one I'm going to rename. Very important that you rename things so that you keep things like properly ordered. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a purple skin, right? So if I just go to the color and I grab this purple skin and hit render, you're going to see that our character now has this very, very nice purple skin. But let's say I don't have the time to do UVs and everything. This is, by the way, a high poly mesh. So I just want to add a little bit more visual interest to this skin. And I feel like this purple is very flat. Here's where the hypershade comes into play. Because, for instance, I can press tab and just write AI noise. And I can use an AI, Arnold, noise generator that will input two different colors to our object. Right now, if I just grab this out color and plug it into the base color and I hit render or wait for the render to start, right here, it's compiling the shaders, what we're going to get is we're going to get this node generating procedurally noise or procedural noise to give us a different effect right here. Let's pause real quick and, uh, and launch this again. There we go. So if we do this again, you can see that he has the sort of like white and dark spots all over the skin. Well, if we go to this element right here, one of the things that we can do is we can increase, for instance, the scale. Let's say 50, 50, and 50. And you can see now we get this very, very cool looking noise all over his body. We can go to the colors, by the way, and we can use the same sort of like lavender color that we have right here. I'm going to use on the other one. Oh, let's pause this. There we go. So on this other one right here. Why is it not letting me? Oh, it's over here. There we go. Let's use like a like a darker lavender color. So now when we render, as you can see, we're going to get this very, very nice effect. So instead of having to go through the whole process of creating my own texture, I can procedurally generate this texture. There's a lot more complex nodes that we can use to add even more like complexity to the element. But as you can see, this allows us to give this very like texture, nice texture skin. We can change, for instance, the distortion of the noise. We can change the lacunarity, which is like the, the way that little dots like come up together. You can animate the time. So if we change this to like a 10, the noise is actually going to be like moving around. So there's a lot of things that we can do here with the character. Now, one of the things that you need to understand is that every single thing that we have right here is information, right? So this node right here is conveying, is, is, is outputting a color information that maps itself to a base color information. So anytime you see this red dot, that's an RGV information. So that's a vector. We have three values, one for R, one for G, and one for V that are going into that node and changing the behavior of the element. Anytime you see this green one, that's a float. It's a single value, single number that changes how this element looks. So metalness, for instance, if it's set to zero, the object is no metallic at all. And if we set this to one, this thing is completely metallic. So you can also, for instance, bring in an AI noise and input that into a metalness so that you get certain parts are metallic and certain parts are not metallic, which we're not going to do right now. But it's a it's an option, right? Now, let's say we wanted, for instance, to use this same thing, the same skin, to break up the glossiness of the object, because right now the glossiness is all over the place. Well, the glossiness is controlled with this thing right here called the roughness. And unfortunately, the roughness map is a float value. And this one right here is a color node. So if I try to plug this in into the roughness, it's not letting me because the values are not compatible, three to one. So we need to somehow either extract only one channel from the noise or find a way to collapse those into a single node. 
If we want to extract the channel, you can just click on this part right here and you can see we have access to the RGMV elements and we can bring this R element directly into the specular roughness. And what's going to happen now, as you can see, is certain parts are going to be more glossy and certain parts are going to be less glossy. Interesting, right? So again, it's all information, it's all numbers. We're extracting information from the different maps to generate an interesting result. Here's another thing that we can do. We can use a uh, AI ramp float. So what I can do here is I can plug in this R input and then output the exact same R input. And this AI ramp float, what it allows me to do is it allows me to control the values of the white and the dark colors. Here's a quick trick for you. If we click, is it this button? No, it's not that button. I always forget which one, which button it is. But there's a button that allows me to see what the active element is. Is it this one? I always forget about this. Let me let me like split this out. Because I was certain there we go, this one. Is it this one? Uh no, that's the alpha channel. Where is it? I always forget about that button, but there's a button that we can use. Let's plug this back in there. There we go. There's a button that we can use to sh see this on the active shader or was this another software maybe it was another software <laughs> anyway so what we can do here is we can go to the ramp information and we can push for instance this number down that's going to make everything more glossy or we can push this one up and this one's going to make everything less glossy so we're changing the values of the the black colors of the dot colors and modifying again these numbers directly on the shader itself again super super powerful tools now of course this material also has the ability to use other parameters so for instance let's say we wanted to use subsurface scattering to make this a little bit more like skin well if we go over here and we go to subsurface we can turn on subsurface but this is going to pretty much override what we had here on the base color so i'm going to disconnect this from the base color and bring it to the subsurface color and now, as you can see, we get subsurface. You can see how on the little fingers, on the feet, and on the hands, things are looking thinner, kind of like jello. And we can change the radius and make this subsurface scattering of this uh, little guy right here a red. So now, as you can see, we get this very nice red color coming through the little objects. Again, all of this being done procedurally and directly on the material. So this is one of the ways why this element is so powerful. I'm going to show you one more thing that I think you guys are going to like. Let's say we wanted to create like a little sort of like force field or something that's coming from underneath the character. This guy is supposed to be like a psychic, so there's a lot of like mental powers and stuff. I'm going to create a new sphere. This new sphere, I'm going to assign a Lambert 1 material. There we go. We're going to center it right there on the character. On the render, we need to say render and update full scene so that it updates and knows that the sphere is now there. Perfect. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign a new material, Arnold. AI standard surface. And uh, to clean this stuff, do not delete objects, do not like just supreme because you're going to get rid of everything. You're going to grab the little sphere or this guy right here and you're going to click this option that says input and output connections. So it's only going to show you what things are connected to this particular material right here. So this one, I want this to be an emissive material. So I'm going to go to emission. I'm going to turn the emission on and this is going to be like this sort of like a blue. Actually, let's go like purple. Eh, let's keep it blue. Ah, uh, let's go purple. <laughs> We're going to go with this purple color right here. And uh, of course, if we hit render, you can see that now the sphere is glowing. One of the cool things is we can actually set this to, say, 10, and this thing is going to really, really, really glow. So what I'm going to do now is I want to change what parts of this object are visible or not. And to do that, we can go, for instance, to the opacity node. All the way here in the geometry, we can see the opacity. And the opacity is a black and white map. So if the opacity is set to black, then the object is going to be gone. Mm -hmm. Why is it not gone? It's really weird. Should be gone. Oh, I think because the emissive is, is winning in this case. Okay, let me turn off the emissive. And it should be gone here. That's really weird. Interesting. Did I set up the material properly here? Give me just one second. A standard surface 2. I think so. I'm going to plug in here. I'm going to click on the little icon. I'm going to plug in a checker just to see if it's working. Uh, something's not working. I broke something here, and I'm not sure what that could be. Really weird. Render. Okay, let me let me render and update full scene. There we go. So it was it was missing an update. So as you can see now, this checker node, what it's doing, it's it's telling the object you're not gonna be opaque in this specific area. So you guys know what we're gonna do here? Well, I'm actually gonna grab something called an AI ramp. So I'm gonna press AI ramp RGV. 
and I'm going to plug this into the opacity color. And the AI ramp is a color node that, as you can see, ramps up and creates this very, very interesting gradient, in this case, from top to bottom. I'm just going to click this little button, so I'm going to flip it. So now we can control, and technically you could even animate this. We're going to control this so the character has this sort of like force field coming on top and generating this very cool effect. But what if we wanted to break up this thing and, and generate something that looks a little bit more interesting? Well, we could bring in, for instance, an AI noise. And we already know that if we plug this AI noise into the opacity, we're also going to get this. So first, I'm going to use just the AI noise, and I'm going to play a little bit with the scale. I'm going to try a 10, 10, 10 scale. Um, let's try a bigger amplitude. There we go. That looks really cool. Uh, lacunarity. Let's go for a really like intense lacunarity distortion. Oh, that's perfect. Maybe bring the scale down a little bit. So 5, 5. And five so that these elements are a little bit bigger and you can see all of this again it's information it's zeros and ones that we're plugging into the material to generate interesting elements now what we're going to do this is where the where the magic is going to happen let me save real quick before it crashes what we're going to do here is we're actually going to multiply the elements so i'm going to press shift a sorry <laughs> that's blender <laughs> i'm going to press tab here and i'm going to go for a multiply node ai multiply and as you can see, the AI multiply is just a mathematical operation where we can plug one element and a secondary element. And the result of, those, of both of those elements is going to give us this thing right here. Look at that. Pretty cool, right? You could even paint your own textures. Like if we export the UVs from our sphere, we could paint our own textures and generate this very cool looking thing. Now we can go back to this material. Now we can turn on the emissive right here. I think a blue one will be a little bit better. There we go. I'm actually going to turn off the weight information because I don't want any weight information. I just want this thing to be uh, right here, as you can see that. And uh, yeah, not even specular. Like I just want this to be like completely, completely flat. Let's go for like a 10. And look at how interesting this whole thing looks. If you want this sort of like force field to also have a little bit of gloss, we can definitely like turn the weight on. Now, let's say we are like, we like this, but we want to modify it a little bit. At any point, we can go back here, change the amplitude of this thing, change the accuracy, change the distortion, for instance, and we're going to generate a very, very nice different effect. We can also go here to the ramp. You can see the interpretation here right now is linear. We can change this to smooth. Um, I'm going to go to this one as well and change this to smooth. Just give us a slightly like better, like softer effect. Uh, we could even like add another point right here and change the color of that one. So let's go for like a dark color as well and use that to, to kind of like control. Again, you could animate the, this thing like growing and, and protecting the element. You can imagine again, if we we're using like this sort of like hexagon shapes, how we can create this very complex shape. And, uh, and yeah, in general, just generate something that looks a little bit more interesting. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it, my friends. Let me just add a couple of extra materials. So for the eyes, I'm gonna add a new material, Arnold. AI standard surface, cool thing, we have presets. So here presets, we can go and say, for instance, give me a chrome element. I'm just gonna make this dark. So this is gonna, this should look like a, like a dark metal, there we go. And then for the cloth, I'm just gonna add again a new material, Arnold, AI standard surface. And let's make this like a brown color, really, really, really rough. We could even go, for instance, I really like using this one. Let's, let's take a look. Let me show you. So again, I'm going to grab this is the last one, this one, AI Surface 4. So I'm going to sample here. I'm going to add sheen to it. So if we render right now, this just looks like a, like a dark like cloth thing. But cloth usually has this sort of like velvety look. So we can use sheen, for instance, to push this and give that sort of like velvety look to everything. See how we get the, the very intense borders right there? Now, I'm not going to use too much. I'm actually going to go for like a sort of like a lighter version of this brown color so that it's not as intense. But this velvety effect is really, really cool to give the cloth a, a little bit more of a, of a dry effect right there. So, yeah, that's pretty much it, my friends. Let me just go finally to our main camera here. Panels, look to selected. Actually, oh, panels. Oh, yeah, because I changed. Let's go right here. There we go. Let's change our format here to full HD. So we can get all the very cool magic here. There we go. And if we go Arnold and render, 
we're gonna get this very cool shape right here look at that little cute dude uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it my friends again You can change as many things or modify as many things as you want and any single modification that you do is gonna give you a Slightly cooler or different effect for instance here again If we go to the hyper shade and use the power of the hyper shade to change all of these elements oh, This one right here We can change the noise right here or the ramp. Sorry the ramp and push this element up to fully like fully like absorb our character so this is the magic of the hyper shade my friends hopefully you find it useful i'm just gonna find a cool render for this one for our thumbnail and that's pretty much it if there are specific things that you want to learn about the hyper shade feel free to leave them down here and i'll be happy to explain them but for a just like basic introduction of the whole process i think this is more than enough again if you want to join us we have our discord channel our first premium course is also released the link's going to be down here and all of our socials are down here on the description so make sure to check them out and i'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.